So you're considering doing a remodel. One of the things that you have to keep in mind is it's not just the cost of the remodel if you're gonna hire someone to do it. It's actually also the cost for you mentally to make all of the little decisions that factor into a remodel. Let me go ahead and give you an example here. Okay, so here is an example. This is our spiral staircase, which we love. It takes us up to our bedroom and our daughter's bedroom upstairs. This had so many design decisions in a singular element of our remo. We were adding laminate floors. These stairs were carpeted before, but we had so many decisions on this one element. So let me give you an example. So this stair actually, again, it was all carpeted. It actually wrapped around here in a curved element and dove into the wall. There was no baseboard there. And we had to decide everything from, do we add baseboard? Do we not add baseboard? How do we trim off? the baseboard, do we dive that, return that straight back in at a 90 degree angle? Do we cut it at a 45 degree angle? How is that gonna look with the bull nose that wraps in? Where do we cut, where do we cut this stair? The issue is with laminate floors that we are putting in wood, if we didn't care about the durability with kids and pets and we're just, hey, we love the look of, we could have custom cut a piece that would curve over that step and we wouldn't have had to dealt with any of the framing or any of the structural component of the step. But because it's a laminate floor, there is not any curved edge pieces. Everything is linear. They have special wood for stair treads that are rounded in. They kind of dive in on the bottom, but everything needs to be at a 90 degree angle for structural support and the way that the material is. It's all linear. So we had literally had to completely cut and reframe this. And then we had to decide, okay, do we want this laminate flooring or wood, depending on what you're using, you know, on the risers, or do we want to run MDF or wood as the risers? And eventually we're going to paint it to match the wall all color so it all moves in so we think it turned out great but even there you have what a half a dozen different decisions we also now need to decide over here you know it's like we have this interesting curved radius under the stairs do we add baseboard over here or do we not we have you know the laminate floors don't come completely flush with the drywall it leaves creates this like kind of not a very straight edge it's kind of a dirty kind of rough edge what do we do here if we do do baseboard here do we end it here do we wrap it all the way on the corner and then if we do we have kind of an awkward transition between this and the riser. Do we bond the difference between the riser and the drywall? So many different decisions and there is a mental cost to all of those decisions. As you go up the stairs, you know, there's a few different ways that we could have done our baseboard. Some people will do baseboard that just dives in on every step. I think that that looks really low quality and doesn't have a clean look and feel. Other people will do a baseboard, a custom baseboard that basically follows the edge of the stairs. And so it's thicker on some ports and thinner or narrower on other. We chose to not do any baseboard on the stairs, even though we added it throughout the house, we ended up having them cut the drywall and slide the lamb flooring in on both sides and create this curved radius so we haven't finished it off it's gonna be all painted and caulked and look really great when it's all done but we wanted this really nice clean light look and we wanted the stairs not to feel so heavy and intense with that wood look by breaking up the the wood steps or the wood look like laminate steps with the painted wall color risers kind of going up if you found this video helpful regarding remodeling tips please go ahead and like this video share it with a friend and follow my account for more real estate information.